10 different types of beige. Hey people, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I am James, this is The Paint People, where we talk about painting and decorating. Today is a continuation of a wonderful series about paint colors that have been curated by Sherwin Williams as part of their 2023 color mix forecast. All four of these color palettes have a common theme that are meant to represent the future of color and design. And it's great because the company gives us four to work with. That's like three better than most companies. We've already talked about the first two, so hopefully you're up to speed on them. If not, I'll leave them in the description down below for you to check out. We have an interesting color scheme today that I want to analyze, not necessarily because it's the most groundbreaking and varied color palette I've ever seen, but I personally believe it's larger overarching message because I'm a bit of a sap sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. It's called Nexus. And the tagline that Sherwin Williams provides is our communal well being. These are 10 paint colors that reflect warmth, healing, and kindness. And I'll also add familiarity too. This is one of the more interesting uses of warm neutrals that I've ever seen. And I'll get into why a bit later on in the video. But for now, let's start talking about the paint colors themselves. Also, subscribe if you haven't already, because we do a bunch of videos like this every single week several times consistently. Some say, how do you do it, James? Others say, just get to the colors, James. <laughs> well, here we go. Before you adjust the brightness and saturation on your screen, yes, there are a lot of colors in this palette with a ton of similarities. The whole color scheme here to me is extremely evocative of the return to beige, but not in the way that you're thinking. These colors aren't necessarily builder's beige that we all know that is more so rooted in a yellow warmth. A lot of these colors go more towards the side of red, almost a clay type of red in coloration. In fact, I see three distinct categories here. We have the more red leaning brown neutrals, the complementary greeny neutrals, and then your two borderline accent colors, where one is a dark, rich color, and the other is more so bright and vibrant. Likeable sand is almost a run-of-the-mill beige, kind of tan color, with just a hint of that red. It's extremely easy going, considering its depth, and doesn't push the envelope a ton. I mean, it's in the name. It's a likeable, sandy color that is arranged first in this color palette for a reason. It may be a simple choice for those of you that are unsure about going too far towards that red undertone, which could be a bit different and sometimes rosy feeling. Malted Milk is the slightly lighter variation of the same kind of color. I would say it's even easier to implement because of that lightness. Definitely not an off-white, so don't think this is the ceiling color of the palette automatically, although I could see it being a pretty interesting trim color choice for a lot of these darker colors. You are starting to see a shift away from having to keep your baseboards and your frames white. So if you're the type of person that wants to experiment with some color on your trim, why not dabble first with neutrals like this as an entry point. Emerging taupe is the darkest color so far of the three and has less of that sandy tan quality because it's giving you a little more brown with that touch of red too. Also, some gray sort of completes that whole taupe look. Almost a gruge, I would say. Rougey gray. I can't wait to not have to explain what gruge means, but for my new viewers, it is a color we all kind of made up together that combines gray and rouge, basically a red based neutral, you could say. Red end point is the next color to chat about. Although I'm gonna save my thoughts on that one for Monday's video when we talk about the Sherwin-Williams color of the year. You're just gonna have to wait, people, all right? Subscribe to keep up to date. Before we get to the opposing or complementary colors in this palette, I wanna stick with the red theme a little bit more and talk about Red and Earth and Lay Flower. These are the colors that have probably the most saturation to them where you can visually see more actual color rather than being grayed out and muted and desaturated. I do see these as the two accent colors here, mainly because you have a color that's so rich and dark with that brown and red in Red and Earth, and then a more fun, youthful, dynamic, almost coral color in Lay Flower. It's a really great combination of accent color choices to me because it still suits the terracottas and the kind of reddish 
clay tan colors that we saw in the rest of the palette. But we're also seeing these colors emerge throughout the world of design in the last couple months or so. So it's really cool that you have two different options, whether you want something more grounded or something a little more fiery and zesty in these two. These four colors, and they're all variations of grayish or taupe, where instead of an apparent red warmth, we get more beige or yellow mixed with gray and a little bit of black, in some cases brown as well. The combination of these colors does give pretty much all of them a green undertone, depending on your lighting conditions and all that. And that's the key to really unlocking the potential of this palette to me because red and green, whether you're talking about the paint colors themselves or the undertones, are complementary, meaning they really accentuate one another in a dynamic fashion. That's why these reddish colors look pretty different than these greenish colors when you put them next to one another. It's really a fascinating color palette considering it's largely based in the realm of beige, but you can really take it in a few different directions, whether you want something a little more monochromatic or something more complementary within the neutral sort of category. You can sort of play with opposites by having Kestrel White next to Layflower, or just double down with a monochromatic vibe and go with Malted Milk, Emerging Taupe, and Red and Earth. That's what I enjoy about these palettes. You can easily take them at face value and just have an assessment of them, or you can just say that I'm full of nonsense and really just spent an entire video talking about 10 different types of beige. Beige isn't your thing, then you need to see these Sherwin-Williams colors right over here because I'm certain that you'll find some fun colors in this video.